Salvatore Laproto was born on April 22, 1926 in Lodi, New Jersey. He was generally known as Sally the Blonde, but other listed aliases included Sally Blue Eyes and Dennis the Menace, a sort of apropos nickname as it relates to an incident that happens later in his life, at least the menace part. At one point, a U.S. government report listed him as going by the name Salvatore di Palermo, no relation to the infamous dean of dope dealers Joe Beck di Palermo, but an interesting alias nonetheless. This is especially so since Laprota was a Lucchese soldier and also involved in narcotics trafficking in the East Harlem area, as was Joe Beck. But while Joe Beck was a capo in the family and had his own crew, Laprota served under Big John Armento, who was also a notorious narcotics trafficker. So perhaps the government just got their names mixed up. Besides narcotics trafficking, Salvatore Laprota was involved in loan sharking and the garbage industry. He owned and operated a small commercial hauling business in Lodi, New Jersey, that serviced large shopping centers in the area. The company operated out of the garage of another hauling firm owned by Frank Stamato, where Sally the Blonde was apparently employed as a dispatcher. As a side note, Frank Stamato was the owner and operator of Frank Stamato and Company Incorporated, one of the largest garbage contracting firms in North New Jersey, even though originally it was primarily a construction firm. In 1956, he was put on probation for five years and fined $6,000 for tax evasion for failing to report personal income derived from his firm. Stamata was also allegedly an associate of Genovese family acting boss Jerry Catina, and his name was repeatedly mentioned by Genovese capo Gyp DiCarlo when the FBI planted bugs in DiCarlo's headquarters, the barn, back in the 1960s. But Stamata denied any involvement with organized crime, and his lawyer once said that Stamata was haunted by that allegation ever since the tapes were revealed to the public. Salvatore Laproto lived most of his life in New Jersey and also owned a home in Miami. His criminal record is very thin, with arrests only for bookmaking, illegal possession of firearms, and vehicular homicide, but it doesn't appear he served any jail time for these charges. Laproto was married twice. His first marriage was to Mildred Pisciata, with whom he had three children. But on June 11, 1956, tragedy struck as the couple was returning home to New Jersey from a wedding in New York. At about 5.15 a.m. as they were exiting the Lincoln Tunnel, the proto slammed into a guardrail. He suffered minor injuries, including a cut on the scalp and broken ribs, but Mildred was seriously injured and died in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. She was only 24 years old at the time and left behind not only her husband, but also three young children ranging in age from one year to five years old. The Lincoln Tunnel, by the way, is a one and a half mile tunnel connecting Manhattan to New Jersey that runs under the Hudson River. It's unclear whether Laproto's arrest for vehicular homicide was related to this accident, but more than likely it was, and no disposition could be found relating to that particular charge. However, during the accident investigation, cops found traces of heroin in a secret compartment in his car. He was charged a few days later on June 21 with possession of narcotics, but the case was later dismissed because the amount of heroin wasn't significant enough to be in violation of narcotics laws at the time. Back on March 18, 1955, a government report said that Salvatore Laprota was arrested in New York City with his capo, Big John Armento. The two were driving in Laprota's vehicle when they were pulled over. The why is unclear. And while searching the car, cops found two loaded pistols, including a 22 caliber equipped with a silencer. Officials believe the duo was on their way to a mob murder. How the cops found the weapons is rather interesting. The guns were hidden in a secret compartment located in the front seat of the car, which happened to be a 1962 Chrysler registered to Laprota's sister, Betty Licata. It appears that this is probably the same car involved in the 1956 accident. Taking a page out of a James Bond movie, authorities said that the guns could be accessed after turning on two electronic appliances located on the dashboard and then pushing a button on the driver's seat side hidden in the upholstery between the driver's legs. After the button was pushed, the passenger seat would spring forward, the compartment would open, and the guns could be accessed. Sally the Blonde later married Dolores Lavorsi, the daughter of Genovese capo Frank Cheech Lavorsi. Dolores had previously been married to Sam Mealy, who was a son of Detroit bigwig and capo Angelo Mealy. 
Dolores had three children from her marriage to Mealy, and she and Sally the Blonde had one child together. Cheech Lavorsi was also a narcotics trafficker who was once convicted and sentenced to 15 years for tax evasion stemming from his failure to pay taxes on profits made from black market sugar. Cheech Lavorsi also had other daughters, one of whom was married to Johnny Dio's brother Tommy Dio, and another who was married to Big John Armento's son, who was also named Tommy. Can you imagine the family gatherings? Anyway... In November 1959, Laprota was arrested and later charged with bookmaking after police found an envelope in his coat pocket containing a slip of paper on which 13 numbers were recorded. He was acquitted of the charge. In 1964, he appeared before a grand jury convened by U.S. Attorney Robert Morgenthau targeting organized crime activities in New York City being perpetrated by the Lucchese family, including labor racketeering, narcotics, and gambling. 30 members of the Lucchese family were subpoenaed, including Tommy Lucchese himself, Vincent Rayo, Carmine Tremonti, and Steve LaSalle, among others. All subpoenaed pleaded the fifth. In 1967, James Bond entered Salvatore Laprodo's life again, sort of, after he was arrested at his New Jersey home and charged with extortion. Newspapers dubbed this the Goldfinger Case. Apparently, he had traveled to Miami, Florida in an effort to get a guy named Manuel Goldfinger to pay back a loan. Authorities said Laporta loaned Goldfinger $5,000, but with interest, Goldfinger really owed Sally the Blonde $14,000. Goldfinger actually lived in New Jersey, but after Laporta threatened his wife and kids when he didn't pay back the loan, Goldfinger packed it up and fled to Florida, and Laporta followed him there seven days later. During the trial, authorities claimed that at some point, Laprodo assaulted Goldfinger, knocking out 22 of his teeth. By the way, adults only have 32 teeth in their mouth. But authorities also claimed that Laprodo assaulted Goldfinger's partner, stabbing him with an ice pick and bashing him in the head with a baseball bat. Prosecutors told the jury that Laprodo was a loan shark who caused a continuous river of violence to flow from New Jersey to Miami. But after a three-day trial, the jury wasn't convinced and acquitted Laprodo. After all, as his attorney said, all he was doing was trying to collect on a loan. Salvatore Sally the Blonde Laprodo, who never spent a day in jail despite his seemingly nefarious activities, died in April 1971 of unknown causes. He was only 45 years old. Make sure to visit the official Button Guys website at www.thenewyorkmafia.com to read more about little-known mob guys and other mafia history. But before you go, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let us know your thoughts on Sally the Blonde in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Until next time.